To add or modify a patient's diagnosis, click the Open icon for the diagnosis checklist. Or if you know that you will end up searching the database instead of using your shortcuts, just click the plus sign and that will take you to the search dialog. We'll click Open for this example. There are two distinct ways to add a diagnosis to a chart. You can either search for it by clicking search slash add diagnosis at the bottom, or you can use your shortcut list and click the plus sign next to the applicable diagnosis. If you are using your shortcut list to select an ICD-10 code, two scenarios could occur. When you click the plus sign, it will either automatically launch the details dialog or it will open a list of additional diagnoses. You should be able to anticipate which scenario will occur by looking at the code to the right of the diagnosis. If the code is only three characters, then expect to receive a list of additional diagnoses to select from, as this represents a chapter subclassification code. If it is four or more characters, then it will automatically launch the details dialog. In order to select a diagnosis from the tree view, double click on it. This will open a details dialog where you can designate additional information about this diagnosis. Now there may look like there's a lot of information on this screen. However, in most cases, your interaction with this dialog will be minimal. I'll explain the fields so that you can determine what is necessary to document in your practice. The CDC status field is mainly used for meaningful use purposes. If you are submitting syndromic surveillance data to your state registry, this is how you would document the required information. Click the dropdown and select the applicable status to do so. This field will be defaulted to None when you open this dialog. Next is a checkbox for Workup Planned. If you create a workup for this diagnosis and want that to be taken into consideration when calculating your ENM score using our built-in tool, you can check this box. If you make this designation, the text Workup Planned will succeed this diagnosis in your chart note. If you would like to use an order set to automate other clinical documentation you will do because of this particular diagnosis, check the box next to Use Order Set and then select the order set from the dropdown to the right. After you click OK and close the diagnosis checklist, the other documentation, such as prescribing medications, referrals, or procedures to be ordered, will be documented in your chart note automatically. In the Diagnosis Status section, you have a bunch of date fields. The Onset field will default to today's date. However, if the onset is not today, you have the option of manually changing the date by typing over it. Or you can right-click on the date field and select All Unknown. If you select All Unknown, the date will change to question marks indicating that you are unsure of the onset and therefore would like this diagnosis to be considered pre-existing. After you click OK and close the diagnosis checklist, this diagnosis will appear in the pre-existing diagnosis section on your face sheet. The rest of the date fields need to be activated first by clicking the checkbox to the left and then the option to modify the date will become available. The inactivate and reactivate fields would typically be used at a follow-up visit where you want to document a condition that the patient experiences, but not at the current time. The resolve field will only be available when first adding a diagnosis to the chart and would be used in a situation such as needing to document a pre-existing condition that may have recently been resolved. The SNOMED selection area will allow you to search for and attach a SNOMED code to this diagnosis, as well as save this SNOMED selection as a default for the current user. To attach a SNOMED, click Search. If the dialog is blank when you open it, 
Start by selecting the applicable category to search by. Your options are All or National Library of Medicine Suggested Mappings. If you select the NLM option and then search and don't find any results, change this field to All and then search again. Next, select whether you would like to search by description or code. And finally, type what you are looking for in the search box. When you find the applicable SNOMED code, highlight it and click OK. If you attached the wrong SNOMED by mistake, click Delete to remove it and start over. If you feel that this SNOMED will be applicable in most situations for this diagnosis, then click Save to save this as your user default. The next time you add this diagnosis to another patient's chart, this SNOMED will already be attached. If at that point you decide to change the SNOMED, you could either delete it and add a new one, or you will be able to click Restore, which will revert the SNOMED selection back to what it originally was prior to saving your default. And finally on this dialog, you will have the option to type notes regarding this diagnosis in the comments box. This could be notes providing more detail about the diagnosis, or information on your plan, etc. Your comments will output after the diagnosis in your chart note. When you are done adding details about this diagnosis, click OK to close the dialog. You will then be taken back to the diagnosis dialog, where you will see the diagnosis you just added appear on the left under the Encounter Diagnosis section. The Encounter Diagnoses section will list any diagnoses added or updated through this chart note. You may see diagnoses display in different colors. To find out what the different colors stand for, click the Legend icon at the bottom of this dialog. Red indicates that it is missing an ICD code, while orange means that it is missing a SNOMED code, and green indicates that it is part of an order set. If you would like to remove the diagnosis from the chart, click the minus icon to the left of that diagnosis. If you would like to add more details to the diagnosis, click the edit icon, which looks like a post-it note, and then the details dialog will reappear, allowing you to make changes. To add a new diagnosis that is not on your shortcut list, click Search slash Add Diagnosis. You will have four options when searching for codes. You can either search for an ICD-10 code, which will be the default screen. You can search for an ICD-9 code. You can use the crosswalk, which prompts you to enter an ICD-9 code in order to find the equivalent ICD-10 code or you can search by SNOMED. After selecting the applicable search option, decide whether you would like to search by description or code. Then start typing the corresponding search criteria in the field above. When you highlight a code, it will automatically find that code in the chapter tree, which is located in the middle of the dialog. This view will allow you to see other similar diagnoses within that subclassification. Please keep in mind that you can only select specific codes and not chapter subclassifications. So if you highlight a code and the OK button at the bottom is not available, keep expanding the tree to find the level of code that is applicable to bill for. Once you have highlighted the desired code, Click OK to confirm your selection. You will then be taken to the Diagnosis Details screen where you can enter more details if necessary. Click OK here when you are done and the diagnosis will be added to the chart. When you are finished adding diagnoses, click OK to close the diagnosis checklist. You will then see the information populate your chart note as well as the face sheet.